Bradley Wayne Allen was a 37-year-old from Fountain Hill, Arkansas. He was your typical country boy and worked in construction. In the early morning hours of Wednesday, July 19, 2017, according to Brad's girlfriend, they got into a fight and Brad stormed off into the night. She expected he'd return right away. He was never seen again. I'm Ed Denzel, and this is Unfound. I used to be a morning person. I know that's going to come as a shock to some of you on the West Coast who have seen me responding to comments and posting links at 10 p.m. your time. 1 a.m. mine. I'm not sure when that changed because when I worked at Star Trek 15 years ago and some jobs after that, I was up at 7 a.m. and in the gym at 7.15, going to bed at like 10 p.m. every night except Wednesdays when Law & Order was on. Then 10 p.m. became 11, then midnight, then 1 a.m., and that's where I kind of am now. But I haven't done an all-nighter for, wow, I can't even remember when. But this schedule works because I make my own hours with Unfound. If I don't feel like recording an episode until 12.30 a.m., then that's what I do. And I think I started the interview for the Trevor Nichols case at like 11.30 p.m. or something like that. Hey, I'm always available to people who want to talk. Well, in the case of Brad Allen, his girlfriend claims they got into an argument well after midnight. We must go on her word because there were no other witnesses, despite Brad's grandfather living in the house with them. Brad stormed off into the darkness, and when the sun came up, he didn't come back. And we're left to wonder what happened in the wee hours. And now a summary of the case. This is brought to you by my friend Megan Good's website, Charlie Project. Dot org. Brad Allen was a country boy and loved to fish, and at an early age he got into home remodeling, fixing floors and countertops, etc. From there, Brad progressed to construction, even going out of state for work. Along the way, he met a girl, Megan, and they had a son together. But Brad had a drug problem, to the point that Brad's own mother had to kick both of them off her property because unsavory types were coming around. Brad and Megan ended up living with his grandfather just down the road, a man who was suffering from the early onset of dementia. So in the early morning hours of Wednesday, July 19, 2017, when the grandfather was already in bed, Megan says she and Brad got into a fight, during which he took off with his phone, with Megan expecting him to return in a short time. But Brad didn't come back. He was never seen again. Over a month later, dogs traced his scent down the road with the handlers, saying Brad probably got into a car. Unlike many of Unfound's recent cases, Brad's does not have a lot of information. But that doesn't mean you, the listeners, can't give this disappearance your best shot. Please think about these questions as you take in the interview. Number one, why did Megan and one of Brad's own family members wait three days to let anyone know that Brad was missing? Number two, is it possible that the dogs traced Brad's scent from an earlier day and not the one on which he disappeared? And number three, is there sufficient reason to not believe Megan's versions of events for that night? Brad's family continues to hold out hope he is alive, despite the odds of him not being so. The guest for this episode is Brad's mother, Linda Allen. Unfound news. It's been five days since the episode with Steve Pankey came out. Have you listened to it yet? I've gotten some responses that state it's the best interview I've done. I really don't know if that's true. However, I do believe it's the most complete discussion Steve will ever have regarding Janelle's murder. So, is he the murderer or not? Next, The November 2019 newsletter went out last Friday. Did you get it? 
You should have if you're on the list. If you're not, contact me privately at unfoundpodcast at gmail.com. And finally, how did I plan the disc golf tournament last weekend? Not too bad. Kind of fell apart a bit at the end, but it was another step in the right direction for my game. And I'm playing again this weekend. Where you can find Unfound. Unfound supports accounts on Podomatic, iTunes, Stitcher, Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, and Facebook. On Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, please join us on YouTube for the Unfound live show. Contribute to Unfound at patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast. You can also contribute at PayPal, unfoundpodcast at gmail.com. That is also the email address. Merchandise, the books at amazon.com in both ebook and print form. Do not forget the reviews. Shirts at unfound-podcast.myshopify.com. Cards at makeplayingcards.com forward slash sell forward slash unfound podcast. And please mention unfound at all true crime websites and forums. Thank you. I'm so happy to have on this episode of Unfound the mother of Bradley Allen, Linda Allen. Linda, welcome to Unfound. Thank you. Let's start here as we usually do on Unfound. Let's talk about the Allen household, the Allen family, uh, and of course, mainly concentrating on Brad. Uh, what would you, uh, first of all, do you have any other children besides Bradley? I do. I have a daughter, Angie. Mm hmm. Okay. And she, she has three kids. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 21, 14, and 12. Okay. And was she uh, Bradley's older sister or younger sister? No, she's younger. Brad no. was my firstborn. Okay. And how did uh, everybody get along? Were they were they close and, you know, uh, good brothers and sister relationship or not? Uh, they they had a, you know, an okay relationship that, like most uh, brothers and sisters do. They they fought like cats and dogs. Okay, but sometimes. In the end, they both loved each other and would, you know, have their back. Okay. Anything. Okay. Do you think that Brad was a good older brother for Angie? Did she? Did he like look out for her, watch out for her? You know, in case she was getting into any problems with any guys or anything. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he was always there. Okay. And what would you say Brad's personality was like? What was he? You know, what was it? What was interests? You know, uh, you know, being from your state, uh, was he into hunting and fishing or sports or what was he into? He liked to hunt and he liked to fish. Um, he didn't didn't do all that much. Fishing, but he did like to hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, he really, I mean, he he just always seemed like he wanted to be somewhere else. You know, he didn't he didn't like to sit around us grown folks. Okay, didn't let any grass grow under his feet. Oh no, you don't like to be moving. Okay, and did he play any sports, or you know, did he go to school? What did he do in those areas? Yeah, he went to school um, till 10th grade, and then he had, you know, had, had one a teacher that um, it seems like anything got done at the school or anything happened at the school, Brad Allen was to blame. Even on days that Brad was homesick, Brad did it, you know, huh. just a pick on Brad kind of thing. And then, so, he got... Out of school, and they were going to, we signed him over to lifelong learning where he was to get his GED. Um, He signed in at college level. He got his GED in two and a half days. Wow, wow. You know, all the days. That's how many. It took two and a half days for him to get his GED. That's it, huh? Very smart. Yes. Yeah, sounds like he it. was in the tenth grade. His agri teacher said that you could could not tell Brad's 
wailed. Um, uh, you couldn't tell his well from a senior well. I mean, he he was good. Brad wow. could do anything he set his mind to. He 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 was taught how to lay flooring, ceramic tile, carpet, hardwood. I mean, and he was good at it. Wow, very good. Well, that, those are certainly. He put my floor down. Oh, did he in your house? Mm-hmm. Okay, you made him do that for free. You made him do that for free, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> I sure did. Okay, okay. Well, the... maybe, maybe a little bit of beer on the side. Okay, all right. Well, okay. Well, I understand that then. Okay. Well, those are skills I certainly respect because I don't know how to do any of those things. So uh, he must have been very talented. Is that what he did? Um, you know, for work as a job. You know, once he became an adult, or what he do? He did for for a long time. Um, he would work with this other guy, and he's the one that showed him the ropes, taught him how to, you know, do all of it. I mean, he he would do some two story houses, uh, and the guy would leave him there to do it on his own. And mm-hmm. I mean, that's how much confidence he had in him. And he did that for years, and then he started. Um, working construction and he worked for a couple of places um construction then he'd work out of town um as welder at another place but um right before brad went missing he was working with uh la construction and cross it okay okay and what was his specialty within construction what was he? What did he do there? Um, welding. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a pretty good job, being a welder for yeah. for sure. Okay. And we know that he was well into his thirties, so he did that, I guess, you know, for many many years. He was very yeah, experienced. Brad, would, Brad yeah. will be forty the yeah. 16th of November. Okay, so that's coming up in about three weeks. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he's very experienced. That's how he did. Uh, I guess he made good money. Did he make a good living doing that? He did, if if he would have learned to manage it a little better. Mm-hmm. You know, but I guess that's like all of us. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that was what he did uh, for a job for many of those years. Sounds like he was very skilled in that area. Um, somebody showed him how to do it, and then he was, uh, did that for. It sounds like almost 20 years to me, I guess. And so, okay. And uh, was he, did he end up uh, living by himself eventually? I mean, you know, was he living by himself all those years? And we'll talk about uh, the relationship he had with Megan in a second, but did he move out on his own eventually in his early 20s, or what did he do? He, he moved in with my mother in law and father in law. Um, and then he he has two daughters, Calais mm-hmm. and Lexi Allen. And he got he was never married to their mom. Okay. But she they they worked together for a long time. I mean okay. she was probably fifteen, sixteen when they first first started seeing each other and then they were on again, off again, and then, you know, kind of like Lake you were born, and, you know, he had many girlfriends after that, but, you know, nothing really serious. Okay. And is this Megan that you're talking about? Was she the, is she, did she come in later? She came in later. Later, okay. So, she, well, um, if you can just use maybe the woman's uh, first name, what was the name, first name of the woman who had these two daughters with Brad? Shauna. Shauna, okay. So he so he met Shauna early on. They had a relationship. They had a couple daughters, but then they kind of broke up, and he had um, uh, met some other women, you know, over the years. Yeah. Okay. And did he maintain a pretty good relationship with Shauna and with his daughters? Yeah, um... He, he did with his daughters. I mean, he mm-hmm. he loved his kids. Um, mm-hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of stuff here and there. He, he got in 
into a lot of um, illegal drugs and stuff yeah. um, several different times, and and he did, um, you know, go to jail for those okay. you know, several times. Okay, we'll talk. We had we had girls. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second, but. Um, let me ask you about how – because Megan was the woman he was dating when he disappeared, right? Megan? Right. Okay. Right. Let's just maybe uh, talk about her for a little bit. Once again, we're not going to use – her name is out there, but we're not going to use her last name you know, in the context of this interview. But how did they meet and how long were they together before he disappeared? Well, I'm really not sure how they met. Um, I'm sure it was through other people. <clears throat> they they were together probably a year, <clears throat> excuse me, and mm. he went to work, and they moved to Alexandria, Louisiana, um, and they uh, had JJ was born, uh, which he he is now four. Okay. Um. But they, they moved down there, and then we went down to see them a couple of times, and then I guess they got homesick, and then they wanted to, you know, to move back home, mm-hmm. which they did. But that was the only, they only have one, one son, and okay. I guess him and, him and Megan, you know, like everybody, have their ups and downs. Sure, sure. And they just had one uh, son together. And and how old is he now? He is four. Four years old. Okay. And when they came back from going down to Louisiana, it ended up you had already mentioned that he had lived uh, with your father and mother-in-law. I guess that's your husband's parents. Okay. Yes. And so when they came back from Louisiana, is that when Megan and Brad moved in with the father-in-law again? Well, they they moved in with her mom and stepdad mm. first, and then we gave them our deer camp. She was remodeling to make them a home, mm-hmm. and and then they. That's where they stayed, and then they moved into with my mother-in-law and father-in-law uh, at the last there until they got the deer camp ready. Okay. Okay. And um, just if I can ask you this, you know, how did you and Megan get along? Did you like her? Um, I did. I didn't have anything against Megan okay. at all. I never did anything. I was always respectful of her, and she was always that way toward toward us, you know. Okay. All right, great. You'd already mentioned that Brad struggled with some addictions. Do you remember, as his mother, do you remember the first time that you kind of found out that or suspected that? Um, yes, I got a call from the... Ashland County Sheriff's Office and where he had been arrested and at that point I didn't even know I didn't know anything about drugs or anything as far as your eyes how they dilate and stuff and after we went to see him while he was down there um, his eyes was all dilated and I knew his eyes was green you know like me and my husband and my daughters, and mm-hmm. you couldn't see any of any of that. I mean, they were just real dilated. And from then on, I kind of got, you know, uh, a little bit of schooling on on that from several different people, and mm-hmm. found out that that was because of drugs. Wow. How long would you remember approximately what year that was? I mean, what was that years and years ago, or how old? Uh, f- yeah. Years and years ago. It was, yeah, it was uh, several years. Okay, back. okay. And this is something, though, that continued to pop up after then? Yes. Okay, would you yes. would you say that he had 
several run-ins with the law regarding drugs or just that one time or just a couple times or what would you say? No, it was, it was terrible. Wow. Okay. So, all right. So he was having some issues. Did he ever try to get help? Did he try to get sober? Any times or? Yeah. He, he did in a couple of rehab places that he went to. They're, they're jokes around here. They're not, mm-hmm. you know, he went to a place in Warren. He went to a place in Dermot. And, you know, he was just, just didn't do him any good. You know, because okay. it wasn't a, a real good facility. Wow. Okay. What was, if you can say, what was his drug of choice? What was he addicted to? Meth. Meth, okay. All right. As, you, as his mother, you know, can you offer any insight? Why do you think that ended up happening? Any idea? Um, uh, money. I mean, he, he wasn't only using at one point. You know, mm. he was, you know, manufacturing. Oh, was he? Wow. And, yeah, you know, wow. I always thought, well, peer pressure, you know, mm. he, you know, and, and it is true. You get into it with the wrong crowd, but a lot of times that wrong crowd was right. But like I said, he, he's a, he was a good kid. Do anything if you ask him to do, you know, mm. and he just got mixed in with that. And I mean, it just like consumed his life just about. Okay. Uh, you should know, Linda, that we talk, uh, of course, a lot about uh, drugs and addiction on this program. After 150 cases, you, you know, we, we're going to run into it quite a bit. But I want you to know that it's not something, the only reason we talk about it is because it, a lot of times drugs can be an element of a disappearance. You know, drug deal gone wrong, et cetera. Well, I'm not saying that happened in Brad's case. I We don't know. But, you know, that's the only reason we're not here to dig up dirty secrets and secrets of people's lives. The only reason I'm asking you about it is because it's the disappearance and could have played a a factor in that. Um, Was Megan, do you know if Megan was into it too or was she trying to get um, Brad out of it? What do you think? No, she she was doing the same thing. Okay. Maybe not as bad. But I, I know she was. Okay. Let's talk about this. Uh, getting closer to the time that he that he disappeared. Now that we know what his work was, he had some uh, some kids. We know that his girlfriend was Megan. We know he was struggling with some addictions and had some run-ins with the police because of it. Um, you two did have a falling out at one point. Uh, was this regarding uh, the drugs? What What was the reason? Yes, we um, had, like I said, we had let them, you know, have the deer camp, and it's down a long driveway, and we <clears throat> we can't see it from here. And but then we started noticing a lot of traffic in and out, and I went and took JJ back down there one day, and we we had some words and him and his dad had some words and we was pretty sure what we, what was going on. I mean, he had a couple of felons hanging around. Um, you know, you're not mm. supposed to be around a felon, you're not supposed to be around another felon. Right. And so they were, they were around and we kind of told them that they had to go. And, uh, him and my husband had gotten into it, and we had to call the law, and we had to end up and file charges on him so that he could would get evicted. And then before it come up for court, we were going to drop the charges, and then the sheriff didn't want to drop them. He didn't actually drop them, but the, for the reason being that wherever he was at and if he got into trouble it would come across the wire as to where he was at Mm -hmm. which it hasn't it hasn't so far and it's just not like him to stay in out of trouble for that long which I hope to God he he is you know right of course of course 
the reason that you had, you got him out of there uh, was because you know he wasn't living his life the right way. He was hanging around the wrong right. people, and you know you know he had to be you know who knows what's going to happen on your property. So you had to evict him. Had to get him out of there. Right. Okay. And we wanted better for JJ. We didn't of want course. him to be around all of it. Right. Right. So, as we mentioned earlier, though, Brad and Megan ended up going to live with your in-laws, your husband's yeah. parents, even though – did they know that what Brad and Megan were into and everything? Have they just accepted that? I mean, how would you explain that? Um, by the time that Brad and Megan went to live with my father-in-law, my mother-in-law had already – uh, passed away okay. and so they were living with him well he didn't he I guess maybe say he had dementia um, Alzheimer's I mean he'd talk about you know things that that happened you know a long time ago or something mm-hmm. but he didn't remember things as clear as he used to okay and so did I mean, did they just kind of like move in, being that he was maybe losing some of his mental capacity? I mean, did they just kind of like move in without him, you know, uh, approving it? I mean, it, how did that, I mean... No, he, he knew that they were living there. Okay. And to this day, he still thinks that that Brad's just outsmarting the law and hiding from the law, he said. Okay. You know, and then, then he'll just laugh. Okay. I guess what I'm asking is, you know, being that you thought that, and I'm not saying you thought it, you knew that Brad and Megan were having these, you know, these drug issues. All I'm asking is the father-in-law didn't, wasn't bothered by that stuff. Or was he so mentally incapacitated that he didn't care or didn't realize it? I guess that's what I'm asking. He didn't realize it. Didn't realize it. Okay. Yeah, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have stood for it if he would have actually known that okay. it was possibly going on in his house okay did your us did your husband ever tell his father hey you know you sure you know what you're doing here um no um because they they were having some issues at that time too oh, okay. a lot of it you know, had to do with with brad okay so your your husband and his father the father-in-law they weren't on speaking terms at the time all of this was happening. Right. Okay. Uh, do you know, and how long did, Ma- just roughly, how long uh, did Megan and Brad live with your father-in-law before Brad disappeared? Uh, probably a month or less. So not long. Not long at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. During that time, um, were the police ever called out there? Do you know? Once again, I know you, you, you had this falling out with your son, Brad. Your husband wasn't talking to his father, but did you ever hear about anything through the grapevine like, well, the police got called out there or, or anything like that? Or do you think that month was fairly smooth? That was, you know, fairly smooth because he wasn't in his right mind. So okay. Otherwise, it would have been – it would have been. Okay. Okay. And is this property close to where you uh, live or, you know, is it several miles away or what? No. I can see the trailer from here. We <laughs> live all live on the same 20 acres. Wow. Okay. So even though you, once again, unfortunately, um, you and Brad had a falling out regarding what he was doing on at this uh, hunting camp, but even when he moved, he really wasn't that far away. Right. Wow. So would you say a half mile? Or? That he could call his own. Okay. Know? Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, would you say it was a half mile away? A mile away? Or? Oh, no. Oh, not no. even that far. No, like a quarter mile away. Uh, maybe it's to the deer camp, maybe. Okay. Maybe a quarter of a mile. <laughs> not even that far. Okay. Probably not that far. All right, so let's let me just maybe put it to you this way. This is just to give the uh, the listeners an idea, you know, of, of everything because he did disappear from where he was living. So I think it's important for the listeners to understand how close he lived to you. If you were to walk out of your house right now and walk to where he was living, how long do you think it would take you? 
three or four minutes. That's it. Wow. Okay. That's close. That's pretty close. Okay. I'm good at baseball. I could throw a rock and get pretty close. Okay. That is very close. Okay. All right, and any idea of how Megan and Brad were getting along? You said it was smooth, but after the fact, I'm going to ask you about now that Brad's disappeared. After the fact, how were Megan and Brad getting along at that time? Did any of their friends ever come to you after he disappeared and say, you know what, those two, they weren't getting along, so what? Anything like that? No. Nothing. No. Okay. I do know that the only time that... Brad and her was ever apart was at the most three days. That's it. Okay. But they had gotten in, you know, to an argument. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he, he left, or she said he left, walking. Yeah, okay. It, you know, okay, we're, we're going to talk about, easy. right, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that very shortly, but I just want to ask you one more thing. Uh, regarding Megan... Were her parents fairly involved in their lives? I mean, did they babysit for their son? Did you know her parents very well? You know her family at all? Um, I, I didn't ever know them until Brad and Megan got together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I didn't know them, you know, very well then. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mother, more so, because she had came down when J.J. was born. Alexandria, and you know we we saw them then. Okay. But as far as them getting along, I mean, we thought they got along okay, you know. Okay. All right. So um, we've set this up. We know that Megan and Brad were a couple. They had a son together. Both struggling with. Uh, addictions, uh, you had kicked them off of uh, your land out of this hunting camp because of that. They had some suspicious people hanging around that, that you didn't like, totally understand that. So then they moved not too far away to move in with your father-in-law. They're there about a month. Seemingly they're getting along. Their son is with them, and then we, they're only there for a month, and that's when Brad disappears. That's how that all that, all, that happened. Okay. So let's now talk about July 18th, 2017, the, the day, the evening that is generally accepted as being the day uh, that uh, he disappeared. Um, we're going to kind of look at this, you know, looking back at it. So um, what have you learned after the fact about that day? Uh, did Brad go, go to work that day? You know, what went on is what you've been able to find out as far as what Megan or anybody else has been able to tell you? Well, we did find out that Megan had called in to work for Brad um, two days prior to that. Hmm. Um, His boss man's name was Tiny, and um, he, he came on the searches and stuff with with us, and he was out here, even though, you know, he knew Brad would do some work and don't tell him how many times he would have to fire him, and then he'd always fire him back because Brad was a good worker. But he was out here um, every day when he got off, and okay. he was riding these roads in the woods, you know, looking mm-hmm. for him. Okay. And, um, so he told you that that Megan had called in for Brad a couple of days before he disappeared for work. Right. Okay. And that is um, that's not uncommon, of course, for people who have uh, uh, addictions. So on that day, what you I guess you're saying is on the day July eighteenth, two thousand seventeen, that Brad didn't go to work. Right. Okay. Do you have any idea how he spent that day? As Megan, you know, if you've talked to her. You know, or anybody, what have they said that, you know, that they did that day? Did they go anywhere? Did they see anybody? Did anybody see them that day? Um, we, we didn't, you know, we, like, were on the outs, and we didn't see him, but my, my brother-in-law, um, saw him on Monday, on the 17th. Okay. And they had been, um, 
mowing the yard and weed eating, you know, but other than that, you know, that that's all I know about. Okay. So what you're saying is it's somewhat unclear on how Megan and Brad spent July 18th. Right. Okay. All right. So whether or not it was actually July 18th. Okay. So that's something that I was going to just ask you, being that uh, somebody seemingly saw him on the 17th, the day before. But nobody saw him on the 18th. We're kind of just taking Megan and other, maybe possibly other people's words that that's the day. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Um, so, what is the story regarding Brad dis, uh, disappearing then? What does she say happened? And we'll get into how you find out and everything. But what did she say happened? She said that they got into an argument and he went for a walk in the woods. Okay. And he never came back? No. Okay. Three o'clock in the morning. All right. So three o'clock in the morning. Do you know, once again, we're a little unclear on this, but do you believe that that's early on July 18th or early on July 19th? Um, well, according to her, it was... Um, well, I guess that would be early on the 19th. Okay. You know. Okay, yeah. so, so almost like you said they were out there weed eating on July 17th, so almost two days after that, almost. Right. Okay, all right. So she says they had an argument, and she says that he took off and he never came back. Right. Okay. Um, when did she let anybody know? How soon did she let anybody know that Brad uh, was missing? How long did it take? We found out on the following Saturday. Wow. So the 17th is a Monday. Saturday would be like the 22nd or something. It's the, yeah. so, so she didn't come and get – even though – like you said, you were only living three or four minutes away from each other. She didn't come over to you like the next day when Brad didn't come back and say, you know what, your son's went and he never came back. She didn't do that. No. Okay. In those days, we were upset about it I'm, I'm sure you were. Been out looking for him. Of course. Of course. Uh, so in those days between what she says is the disappearance date and then you finally finding out, uh, anything unusual, anything now that you look back? Uh, we have to realize that this is just a little over two years ago. Anything that you look back in those days, you were like, well, you know what, it's, you know, I didn't see Brad, even though I know he and I weren't talking, but I didn't see him, I didn't see a car go in and out of there, anything like that. Anything that kind of strikes you now as being strange? No, I mean, we didn't see, you know, we didn't see him before that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they so-called, I mean, like I said, she's the only one that would know, okay, mm-hmm. Brad left for a walk, you know, three o'clock the next morning, um, went for a walk in the woods, you know, he had shorts on, mm-hmm. t-shirt, tennis shoes, a ball hat, but there's mosquitoes, snakes, everything in the woods on July 18th. Mm-hmm. Did you ever know, being that you're his mother, did you ever know him when he got angry to kind of go blow off steam by walking off? Uh, Had you ever heard of that? Have you ever seen him do that before? No. No, He'd blow off steam, but he wouldn't go off to do it. Okay. All right, so he wouldn't walk off. Okay. All right. So um when did you so how did you we know when it took some days and we're going to get a little deeper into that eventually but how did you end up finding out that he was missing um my husband's niece brad's first cousin and megan came down here and told us that he was was missing hmm okay and, and and this is when she told Jennifer you the story. Made, Please. Jennifer made Megan go and file a police report. 
she didn't want to do it, but um, Jennifer made her go do it. Hmm. Do you know of any reason why Megan didn't did, – did Megan ever say anything to you or say anything uh, to your cousin? Um, why she didn't want to f- fill out a missing persons report? Any reason? No. Okay. I mean, she, we didn't know anything. I mean, he left. He didn't have his wallet. Mm-hmm. She still had it. Because uh, Jen- Jennifer told me on several occasions that Megan had his wallet. You know, and the, it was posted on Dateline, online mm-hmm. Dateline, that he had not picked up his check, but that was not correct. He His check was direct deposited. Okay. And I'm, I'm assuming that Megan ha- had the debit card, you know, and Brad didn't leave with no clothes, no, the, nothing. She said he left with with his phone and uh, a bag of drugs, and that was it. Okay. So when she comes over to you, and I, and I guess what you're saying here is that is it even possible that if your, uh, I guess it's your niece, uh, Jennifer, would not have been with Megan, that maybe Megan had not would not have even come over and told you that day. She might have even waited till longer to tell you. Do you think that's possible? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me let me ask you a little bit about uh, Jennifer. Uh, did you know her well? We're not going to use her last name. Did you know her well? Do you think she is trustworthy? Um, how is it that it ended up being Jennifer and, and Megan together in this situation? Had they always been friends? Maybe you explain that. They had been running around together and. Brad would go up there to Jennifer's house and, you know, they they would do, um, you know, smoke some marijuana together. You know, they that's how her and hmm. Megan got friends. Okay. Have you, did you end up learning, maybe when Megan wasn't around, did you end up talking to Jennifer how... You know, Megan let her know. I mean, how did these two end up hooking up in the first place after Brad disappeared? You know, I, re- I really don't. I may know this, but I don't. I don't know mm. at this point. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming, again, I'm assuming that that Megan called her. Mm-hmm. You know, and she she came out. Okay. Did. Once again, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't expect Jennifer to say these things in front of Megan, but did you ever have a chance once Megan wasn't around, did you have a chance – once again, re- regarding that, maybe that week after Brad disappeared, did you have a chance to have a one-on-one with Jennifer regarding Brad's disappearance? And did she ever offer up any idea if she thought that Megan was lying or not? Uh, she always – she wanted – Wanted to believe her, but like I said, she had to make her go mm-hmm. and file charges. Uh, file the report. She wanted to kind of stay on Megan's good side as far as that way for JJ and to see if she could get closer to her, mm-hmm. you know, finding out what actually did happen. Okay. Now, did Jennifer tell you that in those days where you didn't know that Brad was missing – uh, were those two like riding around trying to find him? Yes. Okay. They did that um, from Wednesday to Saturday. Okay. And then finally, maybe it was one of those things where Jennifer said, "You know what? If you don't go tell Brad's mother, then I'm going to." Maybe that's what maybe yeah. Jennifer might have. Uh, yeah, that's very possible. I think that was the, the bulk of it, yes. Okay. Okay, so you find out this Saturday. It's Jennifer and Megan together. Um, if you can say, what did you think right at that second? You know, when Megan told you allegedly what happened, did you have a, uh, you know, a belief of, in your mind, uh, of, you know, what could have happened? At that point, I re- 
we really didn't know. We didn't mm-hmm. really know how, you know, of course we called, we called the law and got them, you know, out here and we had, we had, um, a search just say, not with the dogs, but we had just, a all different people, friends, family, you know, and went, went all out in the woods and, and everywhere, you know, mm-hmm. trying to find a clue or anything. Mm-hmm. Did you see anything, any signs of Brad having been out in those woods at any, oh, any like ripped clothing, anything like that? No, no. not at all. Okay. All right. So they did these searches on their own. You finally find out about it. The police get involved. They do, um, you know, some searches. You go out there, people riding around, see nothing uh, of uh, Brad of Brad's at all. And uh, at any time, you know, if you talk to the police, is it under um, your impression the police actually believed what Megan was saying? Did they ever say anything to you at the time? They they talked to her a little bit, and then I think they, you know, tried to question her again. And they were going to set up a time for her to go and take a polygraph. Mm-hmm. And when she went that day to take the polygraph, because they had to get somebody out of Little Rock to do it, and when she went up there that day, she had a lawyer with her, and she would not um, take the polygraph. Wow. Okay. When you were... Okay, and we'll come back to that. When the police were looking around, maybe they were questioning anybody, did anybody see Brad walking anywhere that night or anywhere around that time? If he's walking out at 3 in the morning... Walking maybe in the woods or, you know, maybe making it to a dirt road or something like that. Did anybody see him walking at all? No. Zero. Nobody in the last two years and roughly four months that he since he disappeared, nobody's ever come forward to say, I saw Brad Allen walking the street or road that night. No. None. Okay. It's like he disappeared without a trace. Okay. Um, did the police, and we're not going to forget about your father-in-law, we'll talk, we'll talk about him in a bit, but did the police ever go into his house, into where Megan, where Megan and Brad were living to kind of poke around? Did they do anything like that? No. None. They, they did not, and actually about last week, or the week before, I had called the sheriff to ask him if they had ever searched the trailer. And he Mm -hmm. said no, because he he claimed that he didn't know that Brad and them was living in the trailer. He thought they were living at the camp, which he said Megan told him on two or three different occasions that he left walking from the camp. But all the searches and everything have started or two of them, from down there at the trailer where he left, so-called left, Mm -hmm. at 3 o'clock in the morning. So are you saying that Megan misled the police? That's what the sheriff said. He said he was going to contact her again, you know, because he said she's lied to him two or three times now. Okay. Myself, I don't think that that she said from the camp, I just think the sheriff, you know, misunderstood. Okay, so maybe there was a misunderstanding there. But but still, yeah. back at the time when Brad disappeared, the police never went into that house, the father-in-law's place, to kind of look around. That was never done. Yeah, not, oh. not until two weeks ago. Okay, wow. All right, well, that's not good news. Okay. Um, let's talk about a few more things. I know that eventually you told me that dogs were brought in, and what did those dogs uh, do? I called. I got in touch with a guy that 
that got in touch with um, Search Dog South, which are south of Memphis, Tennessee, and they came they came down. Well, the the dog went out in the woods a couple of times, but they really couldn't do very much because it was so hot. You know, since it was mid July, okay. and so they went to the about the little past the end of our um, line out here, uh, and then they had said when it comes to rain, they would come back and search again, and they did. And they had gotten an article of clothing, which a pair of boxes shorts of brass and let the dog, you know, smell of it to get Brad's scent and let the dog um, go around all the people that had been up on the porch, down there, or anything, and, you know, make sure that they didn't smell Brad on them. Mm-hmm. But the dog... The dog handlers said that you could tell by the way um, a person was going is like whether they were walking or whether they were um, in a car. That would depend on how the dog traveled on the road, whether he went walk on the side of the road, whether he walked in the middle of the road, or what. And they said it looked like to them that he got into a vehicle hmm. and they the dog handlers did not know an address and they didn't the dogs didn't know and so they went they tracked Brad's smell his scent um, three miles from our house Hmm. To a to a trailer house. Okay, and we're gonna get and we'll, and we'll get into that in a moment because that's uh, I think an important part. But okay. just to reiterate, how how long after Brad disappeared were these dogs brought in? I'd say a couple of weeks. Okay, so maybe near the near the beginning of August, something like that. Yes. Okay. All right, so they brought in, they had a article, brought them in, article of clothing, went down the road, and they went three miles down the road. That's quite a ways. It's a decent walk for the handlers and the dogs. Okay, and you've already given the handlers' opinion on this that they don't think that Brad was walking. They thought that he might have been in a car instead. Right. Okay. All right, if that's what they said, that's what they said. They are the... Uh, as the listeners know, I'm not the biggest – I don't have the most confidence in dogs, unlike many other people in the missing persons community. That's just my opinion. But uh, we do talk about dogs and what they smelled if you know if it's relevant to the case, and that's why we're doing it. And it will be up to the listeners to decide for themselves. Okay. Um, we've already talked about the father-in-law a little bit, but it maybe he had uh, dementia or something. Uh, was he helpful at all? In any of this, at all? Um, no. I mean, he was outside on, on at some of the searches, but he didn't. He didn't really have a clue of what was going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when the police, if somebody, or maybe even you or your husband talked to him, he couldn't offer much. Up, he didn't know that Brad was missing. He didn't know anything about the two of them having a fight. He really didn't know anything. No. All right. He was just as surprised as everybody else that Brad was missing. Yeah. And wow. It, even to this day, he, he don't really even have a clue. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, he didn't, it seems like, you know, to me that if they would have had an argument that hmm. he would have gotten woke, woken up and he would have you know, wondered what was going on. Okay. Because it was very, um, uh, when it comes to argument and stuff like that, it was very, um, 
loud and voice his opinion. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on to this. You've mentioned uh, the phone a little bit ago. Did Brad take his phone with him? That we are still not sure of. Megan says he did, and then she said he didn't. And who said uh, who said that who, who said that he didn't? Megan. Megan said he did. But somebody else said he didn't. Who was the person who said he didn't? Right. Oh, then she said she changed her story. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Right. She changed and her story. They, yes, and they went to where she worked and questioned her, and she she said that, that he didn't take it. So at that point, I got Jennifer to go down to the trailer and look for his phone. Well, she found one that she said she thought was was his, and then she um, took it to the sheriff's office because they were going to take it and do what you call dump it, mm-hmm. and that gets everything off of it. Yes. And it took quite a while to get um, the results back, but they said it was his phone, but not from a recent phone. It was stuff on it from, you know, white back. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, that's not crazy. I know that uh, at least until I moved here about six months ago, I had a lot of many of my former cell phones, but I finally got rid of all of them. So maybe that's not totally crazy. You know, yeah. that, okay. But just to be clear, though, Megan herself said at one point that he did take his phone, and then another point he didn't take his phone. She couldn't keep her story right. straight. Okay. Do you know how long <coughs> excuse me. Do you know how long it was between her changing her stories? It, you know, within days, within weeks, or do you know? Um, probably uh, a week, maybe. Because hmm. they went back, you know, and questioned her again. Mm-hmm. You know, and she said he didn't didn't have his phone with him, but they, okay. she she left and moved out, um, like the next day. When you say the next day, the the day after the police came and talked to her, or the, the yes, yeah. um, she moved out the day after. I think when we had the search mm-hmm. that day, she left. No, she was already gone. She moved out that next day from when Brad, you know, was so-called missing. All right, right, let's. we'll just keep it simple. She moved out not long after Brad went missing. Right. All right, very quickly. And who did she go to live with? Her brother to start with. Okay. Uh, getting back to the phone, though, uh, when she said that he, she, he took it, then she said he didn't take it. Well, when she said that he didn't take it, did she ever offer up a phone that was the current one? No. Hmm. Okay. Have you or anybody ever been able to get your hands on any phone records from Brad's phone for the days leading up his disappearance or, of course, that night? Uh, the sheriff did. They it was a prepaid phone, so therefore it was harder to get that information. Mm-hmm. And, it is. That's true. Yes, they, they did, and there was a a call and a text to a guy that we will call John Doe. Mm-hmm. Um, and he actually owns the trailer that the dogs track Brad to. I see. So when the dogs went three miles down the road, uh, you're saying that those three miles ended up at this guy's place. And what you're also saying is that when the police got their eyes on the records, this guy's uh, name. This guy's name ended up on the phone records too. 
right. Okay. Now, listeners should know we're not going to use this guy's real name um, because, of course, Linda and her husband still live in the area. This guy is also in the area, and he's known as being a fairly dangerous guy. All right, and um, I've agreed with uh, Linda that uh, we're just going to have to use a, a fake name for now just uh, for those reasons, which uh, is perfectly fine. So um, so you're saying that uh, Brad did call John, once again, not his real name, did call John that day before he disappeared, somewhere around the 17th, 18th. No, it was the, it was a not, the night. Between one thirty and oh, it was in the morning. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Called and text. Okay. That's why we were mm-hmm. had even had a an inkling of this John's involvement. Mm-hmm. Okay. Were the police, once again, regarding uh, Brad's phone, whether he took it or not, were they able to, able, able to ever ping it? Meaning, you know, ping it off a tower and find out the location of it, you know, when it was last on. Were they able to do that? They, they did, and it was probably, uh, uh, probably five miles from here. Hmm. I mean, it was a, you know... Hardly anybody lives down there. Where, I mean, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have to be right there. It's just wherever it ended up being at at the time. Mm-hmm. But it was, you know, it wasn't, you know, close to here. It was probably five miles from here. Okay. So what, you, what you're clear on, though, is... Uh, if his phone did ping, it didn't ping anywhere near where he was living at the time. No. It pinged well far away. All right, was it, would you say that this place was near John's place or not? Excuse me, yes or no? No, No. it wasn't. It wasn't, all right. All right, so we have these phone records leading police in a certain direction. It seems that the dogs are kind of going along with it, you know, independently. Um, And we have these pings that show that um, whoever, maybe Brad had his phone, maybe somebody else had it, but it pinged nowhere near where he was living with Megan and the father-in-law. Okay, let's, uh, we're, once again, we are not going to mention his name, but let's talk about John. Um, had you heard of him before Brad ever disappeared? Yes. You had? Okay. And did you know that that Brad knew him? At that point, no, not until, Mm. you know, everything was coming out in the open and, you know, we, we found out, you know, Mm. who he was and everything. Okay. Do you think that, that John could have been one of the guys who came over to the hunting camp, you know, before you, you, you know, kicked him out of there? Is it possible he was one of those guys? It's possible. I, I didn't ever see him there, which I'll, I didn't see a lot of the people that went in and out. So, yes, okay. that is a possibility. Okay. And this guy is in the drug business. Is he a, is he a drug dealer? Is he also into meth and, and making producing meth? Yes, he was at the time. Okay. All right. And so when these dogs went to his place, once again, a few weeks after Brad disappeared – was that enough to – and you have this story that I think is interesting. Um, when the dogs went there, were the police able to get a warrant for John's place? Yes. When they went – when the dog handlers and the police went, they were all walking. I think one of them maybe have had been on a um, – an ATV. Mm-hmm. Um, they were walking down his long driveway, and I would say he probably got a phone call that the sheriff and the dogs were coming down his driveway because he that was by his his mama and papa that actually owned the trailer that he was living in. And so he gets in his truck, 
and he goes to leave. Well, one of the deputies stopped him, which they couldn't detain him because they didn't have a warrant. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't gone long at all. And when he came back, he had a lawyer with him. Okay. But when the dog went went down the driveway, um, they went out around a building, a shed, and barked quite a bit. And then they went, the dog went up to the trailer and stopped and was barking up at a bedroom window. Um, when the dog handler, when she went, you know how you can hear people running in a trailer? You know, sure. walking, you can hear it yes. be loud because it's not on concrete. Well, they heard that inside the trailer. And she said she knows she heard somebody turn a latch, like, to lock the door. Mm-hmm. And then they they got a, a warrant. They called and got a warrant. And, like, two hours later, the warrant came through. So all the deputies that were out here in my front yard um, went over there and uh, surrounded the trailer until the warrant came in, and then they went over there. The, all they had to they they could only look for a person, a body. They mm-hmm. could not look for evidence. Okay. And when they went in that trailer, no one at all was in there. All right, so uh, what you're saying is uh, they were at the trailer. The, it sounded like people were inside of it, maybe not John, but maybe other people. And they, while they're there, the person brings the warrant. They go inside the trailer, and nobody's there. Right. Okay. And you've actually put forth the idea possibly that there could have been some sort of tunnel out of there. You know, that was the only way that I could think that, mm-hmm. that they could have gotten out. Okay. Because like my husband said, well, they had a scent going in, but there was no scent going out. Well, how did he leave? A hel- helicopter? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? I just once again have to play a little devil's advocate here. Are we sure that you know maybe they just didn't hear maybe a cat or a dog running around and you know making noise inside the place and it wasn't a human? I mean, there wasn't any animal in there when they went in there. Okay. Okay. But once again, they were only allowed to look for a body. It's not like they could start opening drawers and clo- or maybe closets, but you know they. They couldn't look in smaller spaces. They were just going there to look for Brad. Right. All right. And, and they he... said they did, you know, check closets. Okay. Now, I'm guessing that John was finally, you know, asked about all of this, and what did he have to say? Um, he at, In the beginning, when they questioned him, he said he hadn't seen him. Mm-hmm. Well, then... When they were going to question him again, he said he actually seen him the day before. All right. So he's saying, uh, John is saying, once again, not his real name. John is saying that, yes, he had seen Brad, but not on the day that is accepted as the date of the disappearance. He's saying that that Brad came over the day before. Right. Okay. And in going back to the dogs and their handlers, do you think it's possible that that's – what these dogs were smelling. They were smelling not the day that Brad disappeared, but maybe the day before. Is it possible? It's possible. Okay. All right. In any, so, but what you're saying, I guess, is John did try to talk his way out of it, saying he hadn't seen Brad at all. Yes. Okay. And, um, but I, I'm guessing they didn't find anything in the trailer that could lead them to Brad. Nothing of Brad's was found in the trailer when they went and looked? Nothing? No. Okay. Do you know what John uh, has done with his life since 2017? Um, yes, he uh, started a relationship with my daughter's best friend. Hmm. And now they're, 
she they're engaged at this point. Wow. Has he gone? Has he spent any time in jail or anything since Brad disappeared? No. Hmm. Even though the police uh, in the area, I'm guessing, know that what he does, they just kind of let it go. Or what do you think? Well, he wouldn't take a polygraph. He mm-hmm. had a lawyer, and so he lawyered up as well. So, you know. I don't, I don't know. Uh, several people around here don't think he had anything to do with it. Um, mm-hmm. So I actually think he did something. Um, maybe not, but until I have proof otherwise, I can't shake the feeling. Sure. I can understand it, especially if you're saying that the phone records show that Brad did talk to him that, that early, early morning, especially right. since he did that. But. I guess John has never owned up to those uh, phone calls, I guess. No. Um, The girl that answered the phone that night said she was answering it for him because he was up on a ladder. I mean, we're talking Mm -hmm. 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, you know. All right, you're going to have to explain that. So they did try, they did, and somebody did admit answering the phone? Then? Yes. Yes. A girl that, um, her dad and them live, oh, right over here by us, you know, probably a mile from us. Now, she answered the phone when he called, and so they, they did question her. And she said that she only answered it because he was up on a ladder. And so I guess what you're saying is she is admitting that she did talk to Brad then? Uh, apparently, because that's, that's what they the sheriff told me. But hmm. we had never you know, heard any more about it. I mean, we, we wanted them to question her more, but mm-hmm. it's like pulling teeth around here to get them to go over me on, which mm-hmm. they did. Anything I've asked them to do, but again, I've had to ask. You know. Yeah. What do you uh, do? You know this girl? Do you know her uh, reputation? Do you think that she can be believed? What do you think? I don't know. I mean, um, her dad is a roofer. He put a roof on our house. Um, I mm. I don't know much about her. At all, I mm. wouldn't even know her if I walked up on. Her. I mean, okay. I know the name is all. That's it. Okay. Maybe she's telling the truth. Maybe she's lying. Maybe she's afraid. Not sure. Mm-hmm. Not sure. Yep. Okay, but there is proof that somebody did answer that phone when Brad called. And is it your understanding regarding those phone records is that is that's the last time that his phone was used? Yes. Hmm. All right. Let's talk a little bit more uh, about Megan. I think we've already uh, – she moved out immediately. She went and lived with who again? Her brother. Her brother. Her brother. And, and then who did she live with next and where, what's she doing now? Um, they got in, into it from – I understand that – he found her. He, meaning her brother, found drugs, and he kicked her out. Mm-hmm. And she went and moved, moved in with her mom and stepdad. And she's been working at Andy's restaurant in Crossing, um, but mm-hmm. I don't know if she still is or not. But um, okay. and I actually. Got, finally got invited to a birthday party in August uh, of JJ, so I went. Didn't didn't talk anything about this with her. I spoke to her mom a little bit, but mm. you know, nothing nothing really, you know, that would be incriminating 
she mm. wasn't going to say anything. That <clears throat> The only thing she would say is that she was suffering as well. Okay. And I realize, Linda, in your position, you you know, it's very difficult for you because you want to have a relationship with your grandson, right, JJ. Right. But on the other hand, um, you can't ignore facts regard, regarding your son's disappearance either. It's tough. Right. It's very difficult, yeah. And a lot of yeah. my guests are in that same situation. It's a very, very uh, fine line to walk, you know, very, very – it's very difficult. Uh, did uh, Megan end up with another guy after Brad disappeared? Um, how long did that take? Did she or didn't she? We heard that she um, was seeing someone, um, and he had he had a reputation of uh, dealing with drugs as well. Mm-hmm. Well, again, maybe we shouldn't be surprised at that if Megan was into drugs, at least at the time. We don't know if she's doing them now. I hope she's not. But at the yeah. time, it would not be a surprise if she was into them, that if she did find a new guy, uh, that he might be into them as well. Uh, do you know how how soon this was uh, after? Or I would probably three or four months. Okay. So not very quickly. It wasn't like a week later or anything. And so maybe that's, you know, those, uh, not, that's not suspicious at all. Uh, in yeah. being that you got invited to this birthday party, I really don't know for a fact how much correspondence you've had with Megan in the last two years. But at any time, has she ever explained why she just didn't come right to you when Brad went missing? Why did she wait all of those days to report him or to tell you to even report him missing? Any idea? She – no, I don't – I guess maybe she knew that we would suspect something, mm-hmm. um, you know, because she didn't have any reason for not telling us. You know, I don't know if she was the one that actually made the phone call because I don't know if the girl actually talked to Brad or if she talked with Megan because I don't know who had the phone and if that was a phone call made before he took his so-called walk through the woods. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. All right, so uh, she didn't, uh, but um, it is believed, and we'll talk about Jennifer in a second, that it wasn't like she was just going on with her life. It does sound to me like once Brad went missing, she was at least trying to do something. Like, like what? Well, like, uh, well, what I'm saying is when Jennifer and Megan came over to your house that Saturday, at least Jennifer, if we're to believe her, they say that they were looking for Brad. Right, and you're the and you did say that you right. believe Jennifer. So, it, like I said, it wasn't like Megan just moved out and didn't do anything. You know, I, I guess yeah, what I'm saying. I mean, after she moved, after she moved out, I don't, I don't have a clue. No. It's like, you know, she never, she never commented on any of my Facebook posts. She never liked anything. Which, ever since mm. he's been missing, I have posted something every month. Um, 18, every month. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, let's talk about uh, Jennifer. Okay, so she and Megan, I guess, were friends. That's why Megan, I guess, enlisted her to be with her during those few days before they went over to your house. Um, after maybe a week later, two weeks later, three weeks later, did you continue to talk to Jennifer uh, about Brad's disappearance, and did Jennifer ever offer up an opinion that Megan could have been involved in Brad's disappearance? Uh, she she did. Like I said, she was always um, like on the um, always like on the ear of caution. She she wanted to you know keep her opinions basically to herself 
because she didn't want to let let Megan know that, you know, that she actually thought she had something to do with it, you know, and and do I think Megan had something to do with it? I don't think she actually did anything to him, but does she know? Yes, I do believe she does. Okay. But did, Jen- did Jennifer ever say that? Yes. Okay. Numerous times. Okay, after she, this. She came here several times, several times. You know, okay. Telling me, and then no telling how many texts I would get, you know. And she started this um, social media on Facebook post for Brad, um, you know, and that way everybody could you know, voice their opinion or, you know, try to help in the best, best way possible. Because mm-hmm. at that point, all we had was Facebook to right. be able to get the word out. Right. Sure. Sure. So what you're saying is Jennifer did have a suspicion possibly that Megan, who she was friends with, might have at least known what happened to Brad. Oh, yes. Okay. Definitely. Now, where is – because – and I really keep bringing up Jennifer because, you know, there there's no reason to believe that she would have anything to do with Brad's disappearance. You knew uh, Jennifer for a long time. She's part of your family. Um, yes. You know, you, you, I think, trust her and trust her word and everything. That's why I'm asking you about her. Now, unfortunately, what happened to Jennifer? Um, July 13th of this year, she got into an accident involving a pickup truck. Um, Her boyfriend had had a wreck on a four-wheeler, and he flipped it, and he was in the middle of the road, and they were trying to get him out of the road, and another truck had stopped to help them. when at that point another truck came around striking three of them and unfortunately killing Jennifer. Oh my gosh. So almost two years to the day that that Brad disappeared, she got killed. Yes. Oh my. And Brad not showing up for her visitation or funeral or his daughter having two grandkids of Brad. Mm. Um, you know, it just makes mm. me feel like, you know, that he's either has amnesia, he's being held against his will, or, or the, you know, the worst. Possible. Yeah, right. Did Jennifer possibly think, once again, when you got to talk to her, she, you know, she was alive for two years, roughly two years after Brad disappeared. Uh, what did she think about John's possible involvement in all this? Oh, that was that was a definite yes. Definite possibly. less. Okay. Yes. Okay. What have the last two years and four, roughly three to four months, been like for you, Linda? Uh, I know it's it's been tough, but. Um, uh, it, it, it's been pure hell mm-hmm. in my my French um, I have to work every day I go out I work at a hospital and I I have to I speak to everybody I smile you know ask them how they're doing and do I feel like doing that no all I want to do is you know, go off somewhere and cry. Yeah. You know, it's just but not knowing, you know, I just got to have some type of closure. Mm-hmm. How has this affected your daughter? Uh, her name is Angie. Um, did, how did it, how has it affected her? Um, about like, about like us. I mean, She's mm-hmm. dealing with it the best, the best she can, mm-hmm. you know. And they have since made friends again with 
you know, her best friend and John. So, and that, that's hard because... Like and that's to be girl, weird. I know. Yes. Mm-hmm. That has to be very weird that your daughter's best friend is with that guy now, knowing all of this. And then yeah. not just on top of that, but knowing what kind of guy he is in general. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Doesn't sound like this friend has the, the, the best choice in men, best taste in men. Well, I mean, she's a very good person. She she is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and he, he may be a good guy. He used to ride dirt bikes out here with my grandson, you know, but, you know, the the phone records led us to his name, uh, the dogs, yeah. and like I said, a lot of people you know, don't have the best judgment of dogs, but they did not know the address. They did not talk with the uh, deputies. So they did not know where this house was. Mm-hmm. So, I mean. Yeah, that's some pretty convincing yeah. evidence there. Pretty convincing. Yeah, because anything that, that I can do to to find Brad or see what happened to him, that, that's what I'm going to do. Right. Right. Do you have a Facebook page or anything set up for Brad? Yes, there is a there is a page, and it's called um, Let me long it's Come Home Boy hashtag Come Come Home Boy because that was what Angie kept posting on her Facebook. Okay. Um, I was trying to pull it up. Go ahead, take your time. If you need to look it up, go ahead. Uh, hashtag come home boy. And there are several different flyers out mm-hmm. there. He's on the missing person website. He's in with mm-hmm. NamUs.com. Yeah. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. We have, oh, two years ago, we went to, well, be two years this next February, we went to Benton, this never forgotten um, meeting thing where they have an event every year. And the Morgan Nick Foundation sure. uh, 